night of uh, November, a friend here, Victoria got a flat tire while she was driving and pulled over on the highway and she put a hazard warning light on and she rang me and she said she'd broken down. Three minutes later, Philippa Curtis hit Victoria up at the back of her car, killing Victoria instantly. Philippa was driving at 70 miles an hour. She was using her mobile phone, sending and receiving text messages and just did not see Victoria. It's a terrible loss. It's not until you see the car that they've been killed in and it's that brings it. Bring KCRA three reports. Jordan was the most lovable human being that uh, I ever encountered. Uh, although he had become a man, he was still my little boy. Uh, I would kiss him goodnight every single night. These were the last pictures that were ever taken of him. He was 18 years old. The next morning was Mother's Day, and he went up to do his thing. And around, this was 4.20 in the afternoon, 4.25, we called him on his cell phone. The next thing I know, the phone went dead. My first thought was his battery ran out. About 15, 20 minutes later or so, um, the doorbell rang. As I was barreling down the stairs, I saw a police officer standing there. He said, do you own a Honda? I said, is my son OK? We got to the hospital about five minutes later. And the doctor came, she said, Mr. Sibley, can we go somewhere and talk? I said, look, please, I just need to tell. Is my son alive? It's a yes or no question. She said, no, your son died. And then I let out this, this primal scream, the kind that you see in the movies. But that scream is real. And you, you feel like your whole life has died with your child, because children are not supposed to die before their parents. My job was to protect my son, and I couldn't do it. I didn't do it. My son died. We believe that he dropped his cellular phone. He unbuckled his seatbelt. He bent over to grab the phone and hit this big, massive, beautiful oak tree. And he was killed instantly. People like Jerry Sibley are sharing their stories today in the hope that you and everybody you know use your voice to encourage everybody you know to think twice before reaching for your cell phone the next time you are behind the wheel. And I know everybody thinks that they can handle it, but you can't, you can't. Now, why does the state of Utah have some of the toughest distracted driving laws in the country? Here are two reasons why. Take a look. Two people have died in a crash in Cache County. The men were driving when their car was hit. 38-year-old James Buffaro and 50-year-old Keith O'Dell died at the scene. Every decision was made together. If he wanted something special from the grocery store or if we were planning a trip, it was always done together. He was everything to me. Keith was my whole world. Before the incident, I was married with two kids. And after he died, I was a single parent. And we were going to grow old together and retire. and. He's not going to be there when they, you know, when they get married. September 22nd, 2006 began like any other day. Jackie Frafaro kissed Jim, her husband of 15 years, goodbye as he left to pick up his colleague, Keith O'Dell, on his way to work. By the time Jackie arrived at school, two hours later, police were waiting for her. They told her Jim had been in an accident. I saw Jim's license in the hands of one of the police officers. And I realized that he was dead. <laughs> An investigator at the crash site suspected texting was involved when he saw the driver of the other vehicle, 19-year-old Reggie Shaw, texting on the way to a mandatory drug and alcohol screening. No drugs or alcohol were found in his system, but sure enough, cell phone records confirmed Reggie had been texting from the time he got into his car up until the moment of the crash. 
Jackie Frafaro lost her husband, Jim, in that accident, and Megan lost her father, Keith. So what did the police first tell you about uh, what had caused the accident? Um, they told me that a 19-year-old who was driving a white Tahoe had crossed the center line and clipped my husband, which sent Jim into, you know, an uncontrolled... He was uncontrolled, and he ended up in the oncoming traffic lane and was broadsided by the vehicle behind the 19-year-old. Mm -hmm. And he was killed instantly, along with Keith. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you heard that this accident was I caused I couldn't by believe it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, just from even being on your phone, you're just so distracted. You don't pay attention to the road. Mm -hmm. And I just, it was hard to believe. <laughs> that something like that had happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you heard that? Um, I was, you know, it's shock, it's um, dismay, disbelief. Mm -hmm. Was it you who insisted that he will have to watch the funeral? It was not, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted him to know who he'd killed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that was a way for him to get to know, you know, one of the men. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're going to talk to Reggie, the young man who caused that fatal accident, when we come back. Coming up later, drivers who say they can text and drive. No problem. I think I have mastered the skills of texting behind the wheel. What happened when we put them to the test? That's... Distracted driving has become an epidemic in this country with tragic, tragic results. Half a million. Just think about that for a moment, because, you know, we hear these figures on the news. You hear about the car accidents. You see it. And if it's not in your family, it doesn't even register. Today, what I'm trying to get for all of us is for it to register. Half a million people are injured, and 6,000 people, 6,000 people that belong to somebody's family are killed because drivers are talking and texting and emailing instead of focusing on the road. And until we as a nation decide we're going to change that, those numbers are only going to go up. Reggie Shaw admits that he was texting when his car crossed a median and clipped another vehicle, sending it into oncoming highway traffic. The two men in the car that Reggie hit, Megan's father and Jackie's husband, were killed instantly. So um, I really appreciate you having the courage to stand before them and uh, a world of people here today mm -hmm. to say that you were you were guilty of texting. Were you texting or, or on the phone? Texting. You were texting. And how often had you texted? I would say pretty close to 100% of the time uh, when I drove. Really? Not only me, but my friends when I was in high school. I mean, How old are you now? I'm 20, almost 23. Almost 23. And you were? I was 19. 19 when this happened. So it was common. It wasn't even something that you all yeah. thought about. Yeah. Which is so interesting to me as an older person, you know. I, I think, to me, it seems so obvious that you can't do it, that you can't do both at the same time. But I know for your generation, that's just what you all do all the time. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ever thinks that maybe this isn't a good idea or... Maybe we should wait till we get to where we're going to... Everybody just automatically texts and drives. Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I just never thought about it. Never uh, thought about it. I, you know, I think back now...